How's it going, people? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the Big Six. Hope everyone is all good and well out there, as usual. We couldn't get the show done last night, so we're here tonight. Unfortunately, Hugh couldn't make it due to work responsibilities, but we have Big Steve back in the building. What are you saying, Steve? It's been a little while. Yeah, man. All good. Good to be back. Good to be back. Nice one, nice one. And as always, Saeed, Grizz, Tobes, Matisse, all of the channel links people are in the description below. As always, you know what to do. It's been a little while since Steve's come on. His channel is still running. He's still doing his thing. So make sure you go over there, subscribe, and show the same love to the others as usual. Scar Fuggery as usual. And as you can see, the sponsorship is back. So Manscaped, big up Manscaped. And thank you to everyone out there that supported as well um, last month when we were sponsored by them. Please um, show some love to Manscaped. If you like their product, make sure you go over there. Um, TB620, 20% off. You know what to do. Um, there's a link in the chat. Hit that link and get some products off there and then send me an Instagram with a question and we'll get that question in in a future show. Where are we going to start tonight, lad? Where are we going to start? Because the League Cup is... The, the you lot are out, isn't it? Okay, you, how the mighty have fallen, smiling like that for the League Cup, man. Listen, I'm, I'm just saying. Well, hold on a minute. Hold on you a minute. Know, really like, hold on a minute. Saeed, Saeed, yeah. yeah. Did I not see AFTV asking for the Carabao Cup to be cancelled this season? It's already Listen. been cancelled. You lot are out. So it doesn't matter now, innit? It doesn't matter now, yo. I thought, Robbie's been talking to the league for about three months. He thinks he's Seb Blatter, man. He's cancelling competitions. <laughs> <laughs> Typical, them. Listen, it, it would have been a hindrance to us. I can't even lie. Um, in January, three extra fixtures. I'm not too fast. I've never been fast about the League Cup. People know it on my channel already, so it is what it is. Um, but let's start with let's start with Chelsea because this weekend you have the most difficult fixture on paper, being Newcastle away, and you went out two 0 to City in the League Cup. I don't know your thoughts on that and how highly you rate it, considering. Nah, really? Steve, man. Leave really? me alone, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You already had gremlin therapy the other night, man, and then it just Jesus. came back to haunt him again. Honestly, yeah, with this game, we actually played all right, much to my surprise. Like, we had our moments. We had quite a few chances. Obviously, both teams played their B team. There was a few key players in there. Rodri, we had cover. You know, there was, there was three or four key players on each side, but just the finishing, man, the way this team shoot the ball, it's like they just... No conviction, no purpose. They they shoot like they're like they're still doing their GCSEs. Like they just shoot with no power. It's like they don't want to hurt the goalkeeper. It's like they genuinely don't want to hurt the goalkeeper. Like like they're looking after his well being. They don't want to shoot too hard. They can't place it. Like the ball's coming across the box. Similar chances that you'll see City gobble up for fun and Pulisic scuffing it. Lewis Hall had a couple, but he's 18 years old. He had a great, he had a great performance, but outside the finishing, he just couldn't couldn't shoot. But you know, Pulisic had a couple really nice chances and and just couldn't finish, man. So just tiring, honestly, because because it was much better than the Arsenal display. But if you were if you were someone that didn't watch the game, you just see two 0 and you're thinking this must have just been a walk in the park for City, light work, job done. But at the end of the day, it was actually quite even. It could have gone either way, but it doesn't matter because in both boxes they were better. Mares with the free kick. I don't know why Kulabali's not jumping. Like, I don't know what's going on with him, but he's got to fix up when Silver leaves because you, you can't be 31 going 32 and you're just not able to not only lead the defence, but you're actually costing the defence with things like that, stupidity like that. And uh -oh. then his lack, lack of concentration for Alvarez as well on the back post was, was, was very frustrating. And like I said, with the finishing, so it, it's just jarring. But I don't know if City, I don't know if Steve feels like their goalkeeper was mad in the match. I don't know, but a lot of people are mentioning his name. Oh, I, I, yeah. I didn't hear about him until now. I, I didn't know who he was. Ortega in that. No, Ortega, I think he got Bundesliga keeper of the season or something last year. He was available on a free. We got him in. Um, we needed a bit of competition for Edison because I think some City fans were saying Edison gets a bit comfortable, doesn't awfully do a lot. The backup goalkeepers, Scott Carson, never going to play. Zach Steffen came in against Liverpool last season, was a nightmare. Um, Liverpool pressed us to death. Zach Steffen with his feet, Mane and that, kicking it in basically in his own net. We needed a goalkeeper that can, can if Edison's injured or we're playing these cup competitions, we need a goalkeeper that's comfortable on the ball. Ortega is that goalkeeper, but I think he's slightly better as well at the shot stopping. I mean... Like you said, anyone that watched the game the other night, Chelsea, you think City's walked that, but they didn't. Like you say, the shooting was poor. 
snatching at shots. Ortega made a couple of great saves. Um, City had a couple of young fullbacks playing. Chelsea didn't yeah. expect that. Yeah. Uh, we took our chances. I actually enjoyed the game. I thought it was a really good game of football. Um, it was good to get minutes for the younger lads at City. It was a good win. I think they'll take a lot of confidence from it. Chelsea, like I said, are in the period. They're under a new manager. It takes time, you know. I came on this show all last season talking about Arteta and the time. Did interviews with it. Some people believed in it. Some people didn't. But with Potter, he's, he's, he's not a rookie manager. He's not. But he's a never managed at that level. So he's coming to Chelsea, which is a different animal. They're not the Chelsea from before. Um, Bowley's gone out there with a checkbook, started throwing his cash about grabbing a few players who he wanted. And it looks a bit of a mismatch, but I believe Chelsea will be all right. I think once Potter gets a couple of transfer windows under his belt, I believe he's got three, four, five, six even players in that squad he probably doesn't fancy. Once he starts getting his own stamp on things, I think Chelsea will be all right. But I mean, the Chelsea now, from the Chelsea 18 month ago, it's, it's a far cry from what it was. It's one in a tough direction. And um, yeah, they didn't look too good the other night. And the, they're under pressure. There's already fans getting on at Sterling. Um, obviously, getting on a few of the players' backs and that, which doesn't help. But I don't know. I can't. I'd, I'd like to turn around and say that I give a shit, but I don't. You know what I mean? All the abuse them gremlins gave me over the years. This is gremlin therapy coming back to bite you on the ass, isn't it? So uh, I'm taking it. I'm taking it. <laughs> Listen, I say, I say this. Grealish was very good, man. Grealish was very, was. very good. He, for me, Grealish was like City's most dangerous player the whole night. Coming in off that left hand side. Drawing fouls, creating chances. The guy was a problem, a proper, proper menace. Um, and yeah, I, I, if, if this is how he's usually playing, obviously I don't watch every City game, but if this is how he's playing, then it ain't no problem, I must say, because this is this is this is all you need. It's just him causing problems, creating chances, drawing fouls, and then if other people are going to put the ball in the back of the net, then so be it. So I was I was very impressed with him, but yeah, in ter in terms of us, wow. I mean. It's a shame, you know, because a performance like that is, it is an improvement, but we're not, we need points. <laughs> we have Newcastle next, a team that I've only, I think, lost once at home. I was speaking to Matty, Newcastle fans, saying they've only lost once at home this year, and it was to Liverpool, um, a team that really this calendar year have been probably one of the most informed, maybe the second most informed team behind City for the whole year, you know. And they were brilliant second half of the season last year, finished mid-table, now they've carried it on. I know they've got... Callum Wilson potentially out. <clears throat> then Maximum still touch and go whether he starts, but the bookies have them favourites, and and I don't blame them. So it's 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 nuts. I just want I just want the World Cup to hurry up and start, man. And I'm not excited about the World Cup, but I just need I need a break, honestly. I'm tired. Every, every, week, I'm, every week I'm hearing you say the opposition are favourites. It's all mad. They are, like, it's mad. It's it's nuts. The mighty Blues, man. What's going on, man? We need. Um, I normally don't hear this kind of like energy from Chelsea fan. Normally need, they're robust. Normally, mm. they, normally they're like the trophies around the corner. Don't worry. This is mm. this is a new feeling now for Chelsea. A bit of struggle now. You know what I mean? Like I don't know, man. You, 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 you tell me how that goes. You've been struggling for a while. Tom, come talk to Listen, me. Man. I'll how give you the handbook if you need it, Chelsea fan. You might need the handbook. How's that, how's that you struggle? Work? Like? <laughs> <laughs> I just feel weird, man. Matisse is like not confident. The Chelsea fans are up, bro. They're saying two shall bring him back, like. It's all mad in the dunya, isn't it? Like, it's mm. all mad in the dunya. Like, you know what it is with Chelsea? <laughs> I think for me, this, this weekend is so vital because if they go into this World Cup, like, not no wins in five, you know how, like, this Chelsea fan base is probably one of the most toxic fan bases, like, honestly, like, they, they can get on a manager quickly and that's just because of the culture of the football club in terms of sacking managers here and there and Roman just doing what he does. So I feel like for me... Listen, for the Chelsea fan base, they need a, a big result this weekend. And I, and I genuinely believe that because imagine going into the World Cup and you've not won in five. You know what I mean? If you lose to Newcastle, you're nine points behind Newcastle. And I know obviously we're behind Newcastle as well, but just for your own kind of that mentality, mm -hmm. nine points. Who would have heard of that? I know it's a testament of, of Newcastle. They were it's bottom all, this time last year. Yeah, they were bottom this time last year. And that's to show you what Eddie Howe's done at, 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 at Newcastle. But you know what, man? I don't know, man. Stop clicking at Chelsea. Does he know his best team? You know, I mean, certain players have to have accountability, man. They have not stepped up. We could talk about the manager all we want, 
But the players, man, they need to step up, man. You know what I mean? I know when we're going to see Havertz step up, when we're going to see certain players step up, but, bro, the, the, the quality in Chelsea, I said it last week, that's not Chelsea for me, man. That's not what, what I grew up on and what I was like, you know, you know, I, I kind of, we, we played against. That's not Chelsea. They look a bit spineless. They just look a bit weak. Yeah, no, they are weak. They are very weak. Weak mentally. And this is my honest opinion. Because I think, the, you know, one of the things that, made them play better against City was the fact that maybe the shackles were off. They knew it was a cup game. You either go home yeah. or you or you go through. Yeah. And they love they love to turn up in these cup games and, and put in a better performance. Last season they got to both the cup finals, domestic cup finals, year before they do the Champions League. They love the cups. They love the, the knockout games where they just need to turn up. But when it comes to the league where, you know, oh we don't know, should we play for the you know, play more defensive and sit off and then we get confused because we can't even do that properly and counter properly. And um, it's just, it's, it's a little bit all over the shop. We, a lot of the things that have happened in the last couple of weeks is that we've set up one way and not been able to really apply that on the pitch. And we haven't been able to counter properly to sit back and warrant sitting deep. When we play possession football, we don't have the ability to cut teams open to warrant playing possession football. Like whatever we tried to do the last couple of years to try and, you know, really put a style imprint we, we can't really do it to its full capacity. We don't have maybe the attributes or whatever it may be to really apply that onto the pitch in, in its full entirety. So, yeah, man, I, I'm I'm looking forward, though, to, to the future because there are a lot of recruitment staff coming in, in the background. Another one from Brighton, apparently, to make it six. And, um, and yeah, hopefully the recruitment improves and, and, and we kick on. But right now it's long. Do you know what? I, 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 even though I'm a Potter fan, massive Potter fan, I'm not ready to go in on him because, A, it's been 13 games, yeah, only, that you've managed. And I think it... Oh, he's managed, sorry, not you. I think you've probably been doing a better job right now. But no, no, I'm not going to go in on him. But 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 it's a mess that he's taken on board, isn't it? Do you remember we were going on about sort of scrambled transfer market proceedings? Mm. This mm. is the result of scrambled transfer market. Like, buying a uh, Koulibaly and look... And I said... At the time, individually, as a player, he's an absolute legend for Napoli. He's a fantastic player. But the Premier League is unforgiving, his, at his age especially, and especially in this intense period that we got up to Christmas, game after game after game. And I think he's been suffering. He hasn't played much, has he, at all, especially since Potter. And then you've got the, the wing-back situation. He's playing Sterling, sometimes left back, uh, left wing-back. Cucurella, sometimes left centre-back in a, in a three, then in a four. You know, it's it's a lot of scrambled formations, but I think it's unfair to blame Potter for that because that is your owner or whoever your football director was or who made those calls in terms of transfers. It's all scrambled. So I think just give it a season and let him just tear it all up again, probably, and then start again with his own understanding and theory how he's going to go next season. But it's Chelsea. And Chelsea have got culture of winning, and if you're not winning, culture of sacking. So yeah. I think this is the massive test for Chelsea. Are they going to be able to be patient like a normal club and say, look, we've got a brand new British young manager and we've just got to give him time. We can't have this mentality of revolving doors, players, coaches, players, coaches. And I think this is what you've got to see now, how, how, what, what, what happens. Yeah, they gave Lampard time. They gave Lampard time. Obviously, they had to. How much did they give Lampard really, though? How, how they, long did, was they, it? They, they, they gave him time. Let's did be they? wrong. I yeah, can't remember. They, 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 they sacked him. They sacked him what in December? A year January, and a half. January, January of a year and a half. A year and a half, though, Tobes. A year and a half. Yeah, that's, that's what I mean. Do you know what I mean? A year and a half. What, 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 I, what, I, do, what, I, what I do have to say with you, he has no fans in the window. He lost Hazard and then he got them. Yeah. Yeah. And then he got flooded with players. Would you like Conte to be given a year and a half? Would you like Conte to be given an hour? Ruthless with Lampard. But Conte, well, Conte didn't didn't dip as low as Lampard did. The thing is, there's all it's all about, yes, we get it. Like, you give a manager time, but the manager also needs to earn that time as well, yeah? The manager needs to give something back. And if the manager sinks below even a standard that you're willing to accept, then you have no choice. And I think Chelsea were put in that position with Frank Lampard, but I think the mm. premise was they're going to give him time, yeah? They're going to give him time. And I think they're going to give... It's a new ownership. I think I think Todd Bowley is going to get time. I think Graham Potter he's eventually going to make Chelsea better. But they just got they just got to hold that man. Simple. You you sack the man. You sack the man that that um got you 
got you back into a, a good enough position and got you Champions League and you hired a new manager with with players that he didn't sign into a team that he hasn't assembled. Like, what do people expect? He's, he, you're not going to, he's not just going to come. He's Graham Potter's a good manager, but he's not that good a manager that he's just going to come and pick up this mess. And all of a sudden, it's going to be, it's going to be, oh, happy days. Like, what did they expect? This, bro, you just got to, you got to hold that, man. It's you the unknown, isn't it? It's the unknown with Chelsea fans. You because his that. name is Graham Potter, because he's obviously in, in, he went from a small pond in now to a big pond. Chelsea fans are actually, they, they need to kind of live with that in, in a sense. They need to adapt to new surroundings. Normally, they get a Carlo Ancelotti, a Sari, big names in it. Now they're having to, no respect Graham Potter. It's not the most But the confusing thing. part, but the confusing part is, and probably it's I don't know, Matisse, tell me, no, no, check this out. The confusing part is they might have gone for, a, like you described, a small-time manager or whatever small name, but they're still going for the Bertie Big Bollocks in terms of players. Mm. Do you know what all I mean? The game, but, but all that's the all wrong ones. Because- all right, I, players. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't take last summer too seriously. I get it. There was yeah, no recruitment true. staff, so I I didn't expect Chelsea to do anything other than go for big names because that's all they knew. When you have no recruitment staff and you've just had gone through sanctions and you've just ripped the whole foundation of the club apart, and you need to replace two outgoing centre backs in Rudiger and Christensen, an unhappy Lukaku, a Timo Werner that can't shoot, and you need to get back up for Chua who's just come off an ACL, you're gonna go and get big names, and that's as simple as that. And that's the context. What needs to be applied is that Chelsea did lose a lot of players, half of it due to their own fault, with poor recruitment previously, but they needed to replace those guys. We weren't really making the team better. We were just trying to level the team out and, and keep it stable. I think for me, when I look at when I look at this team, I say to myself every single time, it's a team that's put together by three or four different managers that doesn't play one, one, one way. And when you look at the best teams... And now even Arsenal in this season are included in that. That whole Arsenal team is Arteta's team. That whole Liverpool team is Klopp's team. Now, so Chelsea do have to have patience because we need to get through the, the, the phase of our new manager, he needs his own players. I'm sick and tired of hearing that. I need to see the manager have all his players. I need to see that. I've never seen it. Um, and yeah, in terms, of, in terms of the team, I mean, listen, we all know the, the importance of, of Rhys James. Like, it's, 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 it can't go understated. This, this guy is literally, he's, he's key. And when he's not there, even when Chelsea have, and when there's no when there's no Rhys James, this Chelsea team are, are I'm going to give them a good 20% down on what they usually are. It's just, it's just that simple, to be honest. Can I just say though, I feel like, I feel like there's, I feel like there's far too much chat for this game because let's be real, you're going to Man City away from home in the form you're in, did anyone expect Chelsea to win the game? No, no, we're not having it, but we're not directly talking no, about the incidents no, that game. We're talking about overall, the state of them overall. No, yeah, overall, yeah. I get that. But what I'm saying is I the state of Chelsea is the state of Chelsea. I don't really think it's applicable to that to that game. Probably one of the few games I've seen in the past couple of weeks based off highlights where Chelsea yeah. actually looked yeah, Chelsea yeah. actually looked threatening. Yeah. So yeah. if anything, we should probably be talking about it saying, Oh wow, like that's that's probably one of their that's probably one of their better performances against obviously a heavily weakened Man City side, but I'm just yeah, like I didn't really expect anything less. I expected Man City to win the game, and Graham Potter still find his feet. The, the only thing, I, the only final thing I will say on Potter is that he needs to, he needs to see that Lewis Hall performance, and he needs to take inspiration from that and try Amari Hutchinson because you've got young, talented, technical players that could play better football than some of the players that you you keep using. And yeah, I know you you want to be nice and you're new and you're. You're, you're Potter and you don't want to ruffle any feathers. That's my only worry is that he's going to be too soft and this squad is going to drive him out like they drive out every manager. He needs to be ruthless. Pep, come in, Joe Harp, gone. You know, you got a, you got a five-year contract and you're, you're on 60 million for the five years, 12 million a year. You've got the power to be ruthless, so make sure you're ruthless. The board are ruthless. Goal, Matisse, um, mm. it's a bit like the Arsenal situation there. If Graham Potter came in and got rid of one of the Chelsea favourites who he didn't fancy... Mm. people would say, who the fucking hell is this guy coming in here for? And he's waiting about... Pep Guardiola did that at Man City with a favourite, but nobody's going to argue with Pep Guardiola because of his stature in the game. He did mm. it at Barca. He did it at City. No one's going to argue. Arteta walked through the door at Arsenal, like I tried to explain. There was plays in the Arsenal dressing room that were poisonous, but he couldn't go in there and physically start throwing his weight about because you, you're instantly going to flip the fan base that was already volatile on his case. So mm. what Arteta did, he just bided his time and he let them, they let them get enough rope. 
to kill themselves with. And then in the end, look at it now at Arsenal, it's changed. And that comes with Arteta being clever and Arsenal giving him time. Now mm. Arsenal galvanised on and off the pitch are a total different club. Mm. Similar with Potter. I think there's people there that probably don't like him. I think there's players there he probably doesn't like. And I don't think it's a case of him being a nice guy. I think it's a case of him just biding his time. And if he Hopefully. bides his time and he just lets them get on with it, things will happen. Other players will come out, show the worth, and the fan base will slowly start to turn. And if I'm a Chelsea fan, I've just got to look at the Arsenal way and say, hold on a minute. If it was down to certain people, Arteta had lost his job last season. Arsenal have had a new manager this season with a rebuild back to square one. I know it's great looking at that and thinking it's worked a little bit for Arsenal, but Chelsea have put themselves in this position by employing Potter, who's not that dominant manager. He is not a Mourinho. He is not a Klopp or a Pep. So he's just got to do it his way. And I think you've just got to back him. I think you've got to back him. I don't think it's the end of the world at Chelsea. I think the foundations are set. But like I say, I think there's five or six players there that ain't his players. They're not his cup of tea. They can't play his system. Colour Bally not jumping on a wall. Samir Nasri did that in a Manchester derby and I never forgave him for it. Never forgave him. The 50,000 fans in that stadium put the face right in front of that ball and take it right in the face. And then you've got a player like that who didn't even jump, couldn't be asked. So yeah. I think he'll just change the mentality slowly. But I think for Chelsea, it's going to be, it's going to be a long one. I, I'm, I'm not going to give Arsenal too much too much of the whole blue because I see the chat look at you guys all getting frothy in there oh with the blueprint or oh, the blueprint listen <laughs> listen let me say something yeah Tottenham put together a wonderful team under Poch but they didn't win anything so I'm not trying to be any blueprint until I see teams get over the final line and pick up trophies but, but, but they won the FA Cup two that's, years ago. that's the blueprint I want so more the Man City blueprint, not, oh, not, not, not the Arsenal blueprint yet. When you guys get to finals and you win the big trophies and, and you mm. and you you take advantage of everything that you're building, then I'll call it the Arsenal blueprint. But right now it could be the Tottenham blueprint. So I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it for a second. So you're gonna take the Tottenham blueprint then. Well, I'm not taking the Tottenham blueprint. Well, no, they, they won it every cup, so that's all that matters, right? That's I want to win trophies. You say, right? That's what yeah, I said. Why, but, but why out of everyone are you talking? The one that's won nothing. Remember him saying Arteta don't deserve Matisse time. Said, don't deserve I, said, I said, no, they're not. They yeah, won't I, won't I, I was going to get onto Matisse, but then you're there in the background ad libbing. I'm thinking, ah, let I'm me not ad libbing anything. I'll just call you out first. I'm talking to Matisse, not you, brother. Don't don't think you can flip this on me. What do you mean you were talking to me? Don't tell me today. I said to Matisse, no, it's not. It's not like Spurs because we didn't win a trophy. That's what they. That's what they say to us all the time, right? They won the FA Cup. So right now their their resurgent is vindicated. That's what I hear. So <laughs> even now, nah, that's <laughs> naughty tropes. It's not about the FA Cup that they won two years Why? ago. That was that's it. what I hear. So yeah, it's the resurgence in the league in terms of basically solidifying their top four slot. I'd say already they didn't like, care about. But Chris, they, didn't, they didn't care about that when it came to Spurs. Spurs were the, they didn't care okay. about that. So oh, I get it. I get it from Why do I care about context? Oh, Why should I care about context when they didn't care about context? Yeah. Now, this is your battles. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I'm going to stay out of this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want no fire, man. Um, for, for this super chat, yeah, we, we do need a right wing back in January because I know oh, Grizz is a big fan of Asper Laqueta, but we do need we do oh, need great. someone who can replace James properly. So, um, yeah. Would you take him, though, Matisse? Dumfries. Huh? Dumfries. Mm, I'd prefer some other no. names to be fair. Yeah, no, other players, dead. I'd prefer. He's dead. Even he's dead. Fr even Frimpong at by Leverkusen. The few times I've watched him, he looks, he looks all right. But I don't know. I, I, I still I'm still annoyed that Lamptey's at Brighton because I think he's a good player. And obviously, Frimpong uh, Frimpong was ex City and all that, isn't it? I know. Is yeah, he? I know. yeah, yeah. You got you got, and we're after your other guy, Lavio, as well from Southampton, which again I think is ridiculously funny. But, we got big yeah. sell-on claws on them boys, so uh, yeah. keep buying, yeah. mate. Keep buying. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we've got a few super chats in on Chelsea as well. We're 25 minutes in, so hit the like button. I haven't even checked how much we're on, but hopefully we've passed a 1,000 because we've got 4.4K in the building. And as always, people, show the mandem some love. Big Steve, Saeed, Grizz, Tobes, Matisse, Skullfuggery, all of the channel links in the description. And oh yeah, a reminder that Big Six Extra will be starting or launching on Tuesday at 9pm. It'll be a one-off show before the World Cup. And then hopefully... Um, ideally, we make it once a week after the World Cup ends before the Premier League season comes back from the break. So make sure you're subscribed to the official channel um, and Tuesday 9pm. 
make sure you're there. Would Matisse take a free four year banter period with Tobes dancing at the bridge, etc., in return for long term success? I guess this is kind of like what Grizz was asking earlier. How, how long do you want to? How long is the turnaround for you? No, I, 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 no, I don't need to wait three four years. No, 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 no. no. Listen, this is this is ridiculous. No, no, three you're, four you're, years. You're in. You're in for a. You're in. For yeah, it's, nah, interesting. Man. it's interesting though because nah. Liverpool have been through the mud, right? No, nah, man. man United have just. Man, I don't listen, know. Nah, man. The you your whole life. Your club's gonna be rosy. Yeah, this, this, no, but I this didn't say the whole life. No, but guys, no, but guys, let me. But this is true. No, but this is but this is but this is true. It is kind of true in Matisse's lifetime, right? Because we know Matisse, young blood and that, yeah. We know in his lifetime he ain't seen the mud. Yeah, like, yeah. He literally hasn't seen it. So Turkish Steve, me, so yeah. you've seen it. Toby, you know, like what you said about him. I'm not going to repeat it. <laughs> what you said about him last week, right? But Matisse, but Matisse ain't seen it. So maybe it is time to sort of humble yourselves a little, little bit, like as a club, not you. And you know, obviously, so, football's a humbler because you. It, it, it's not going to be a quick turnaround. Like with Newcastle coming up the ranks. Arsenal looking good again. United are going to splash, splash more and more and more. You know, it, it could be a time to just level up. Like I think who was saying? One of the one of the brothers was saying, like it's time to level up and maybe accept three, four years of. No. Okay. This this season, it's it's finished. Next season, then I want to see signs of like turnover of the squad, better environment, better. Um, working environment, whatever you want to call it, where I'm not seeing drama, I'm not seeing Arsenal tattoos and 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 post likes, and I'm 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 seeing a whole team that wants to be at the football club and a whole team that actually cares and gives a shit, like Newcastle, and you see Arsenal now and City, and you can see the environment is is stable. I want to see that. Then the year after, then I expect us to be to be challenging to win some some trophies, and I I think even while you're building, you should still be going go anywhere. You should still be you should still be trying to pick up cups along the way. The only thing this is this is for the league I'm talking about. You should be trying to pick up cups along the way, hundred percent. Life okay. is too short. Life is too short for this this game that you're talking about. Three four years. <laughs> listen, did you see? <laughs> listen, fam, global <laughs> women. Where will we, where will the environment be by then? I don't have time for this. No, no, no. We have to we have to see cups along the way, and I'm saying three years, and then I, we should be challenging. We should be trying to challenge again. If Arsenal are challenging now, no, I'm not waiting three, four years. I, it has to be, it has, I, it has to be, it has to be three years max. I'm sorry. Arsenal are challenging now. Right now, this is what you're talking. Look at the name. Yeah, this is this is this is their first season. But Arsenal yeah. were in a worse wow. state. Wow. Arsenal, were, Arsenal were in a worse state than where Chelsea were when Potter picked them up. Yeah. Um. Kind of answers this question as well from face of this population. Matisse, you look kind of confused lately. How much time do you give each of their new signings and the manager? Um, Ryan says, Matisse, is Mason Mount overrated? And do you think Gallagher deserves to be going to Qatar for England? No, Gallagher for me shouldn't be. In, no, I don't think so. Um, in terms of Mason, I think he's overspoken about. He's overhyped and then he's over and then he's over criticised, I think. What's the he's difference just, between overhyped and overrated? He's overhyped and he's over criticized, is what I said, in, in the fact that he is a young player that he's has overrated. Played. No, he's not because well I, I don't know. I, I for me, I, I, I'll tell you how I rate him and then and then you can decide if he's overrated. I don't know if he's overrated because I don't know what people say. I, I know he gets a lot of criticism and he gets a lot of slander and then he gets a lot of hype. So I don't how can he be overrated if he's got one half of the fan base killing him and the other half of the fan base saying he's He's Johan Mount or whatever you want to call him. So I'll tell you what I think he is, is that he's a very good young player. He's got world-class potential, in my opinion. And he's mm -hmm. had a very, he's had a very, uh, potential. He's had a very, very good to, yeah, he's had a very, very good Chelsea career so far. You know, yeah, he's I had, agree. So, so yes, he's had some downs and he's going, but I, I don't mind that. At the end of the day, if he's not playing well, then we should have, we should have players that are in their prime, not 23 years old, that can bench him. The problem is, is that because he plays all the time, because we have older players that are in their 30s or in their late 20s that don't perform and they, they're not spoken about, then Mason Mount gets a lot of criticism because he's because he's playing a lot. But really, he should be benched. If he's not playing well, we should have better players. We should have world-class players. So, you know, well, Matisse, you know when you said world-class players? That's the manager. Hmm? Isn't that down to the manager? Well, the, the ma but, no, but it is down to the manager. But he he didn't pick to have Pulisic and Ziyech and, and all these players. And, and I'm saying dropping Mason Mount, like he, you could drop you can drop him, but if you don't trust him. who you're, you can't you can't 
It's like me saying to you, why don't you drop um, Son? When, when you, you when, should drop Son. I've asked for Son to be dropped. So, so if I say to you, um, you've got Richardson out and you've got Kuliseski out, you, you should drop Son. He's not playing well. And you should play Lucas Moura. Do you trust Lucas Moura? No, because you think he's a bird. No, Lucas is garbage. So, yeah, exactly. So if, if, you, if you've got players that you don't trust and you don't think are good enough, then you're not really going to drop but somebody who... You that's know, a different point altogether. So, yeah, team. so that's that's my point is that he probably doesn't trust the guys that he's bringing in. Um, yeah. But listen, people people can say what they want. I know this player is a very very good player when I've seen him under Lampard um, playing in a deeper role in the midfield three, and I've seen him I've seen him have a great season two years ago when he won Player of the Year, not the last Player of the Year, the one before that, and he was brilliant. So I know what this player can do. Is he regressing or is he stagnating his development right now? I think he is. Um, because we're probably trying to put him in places where, and, and maybe even himself, because maybe he's become a bit GA obsessed. I don't know what it is, but his, his development was looking a lot stronger a couple of years ago, but hopefully he gets back on track. He adds at the end there, every week the opposition are favourites. Yeah, Messi the goal says, I get he needs time. Potter, right? Uh, yeah, Potter. But he's a people pleaser trying to play everyone and rotate in all the time, saying the players tried their best when they haven't. Saeed, you wanted to say something earlier. Yeah, no, no, I was just saying about well, the, the world-class potential, but I want to go into a different debate. I think he explains himself, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Brendan says, just want to big up Matisse. Man provides the best Chelsea fan content, insight and discussion on YouTube by far. People, go and subscribe. His channel link's there. So if you don't know, um, listen to Brendan, because I agree. H7 says, how do you man... Allowed this Tobes guy to have this much chest. Last major trophy Spurs won was in 91. Don't kill me. Young Leo says, Grizz, please don't talk about we haven't seen the mud. Do you know the history of Chelsea? <laughs> Matisse isn't the only Chelsea support. We're talking about in regards yeah, to... I know, Matisse. I know, I know. Can I say, please, please don't send a super chat if you didn't listen to what I said. Thank you, but thank you for the super chat, though. I said Matisse. I don't know. I didn't speak for Chelsea because obviously Chelsea were born in the mud. Literally, like, that stadium was in the mud. So, yeah, I do know the history of Chelsea. And we've got a couple um, on other topics. But Blue Moon says, yes, Steve, my brother, let all of these have it. Mentality monsters in the mud. Saeed being Saeed and Arsenal going to win the league. There we go. What do you mean Saeed yeah. being Saeed? Yo? Listen, don't make me pull up on you. I know where you live and that. You're around the corner. <laughs> Listen, he's talking me this guy, you know. You keep seeing him. I'm seeing Moss ladies and all that. Listen. <laughs> hey, Turkish. Turkish. Turkish last night. Yeah. I got a uh, video in my messages. From, Bro, uh, listen. This Trap guy, Zoom, man. It was Saeed, yeah? I didn't say nothing. Trap. I didn't say nothing. And one of his daft mates saying, United are back in listen, some, like, I angry voice that. and that. <laughs> saying, man. Oh, know. you know what? United are back. I've saved the video, man. I've saved it for the every yeah, time. Yeah, you've saved it, I've saved it for so I've got to say, just I've we all got. I think every every single one of us. Turkish, Turkish, being sent a load of videos. You know yeah, yeah, yeah. You know Allah, Allah. You know the one. You, you know the one he people. watched. Money. Remember the name. Remember the <laughs> name. Alejandro. You know the one. Ghana. He, he watched Money Heist and he thought, yeah, let me bust a bit of Spanish. No man, no man. Ghana show. It's the answer. You know I mean? Yeah, Alejandro is the way he pronounced Alejandro. Alejandro, get to know him. Get to know. But yeah, man. This is this is not another Yanazai, is it? It's not another nah, Yanazai. No, it's another Lapiotch. Lapiotch. Bob is gone now. You can leave him alone now. Wait, 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 I mean, you got to the same thing. No, you got to give the emphasis, man. Ganacho. <laughs> I don't even know what he's called. He was like, "Yeah, the Groucho is going to be the best thing. The Grinch is going to be the best thing." No, <laughs> no, he's no. fucked up again. Down my head's hurting. Wait, are we, are we moving on to Man United next? Yeah, we still got a bit to do. Yeah, it's we can't. Good. There's no way. To Toby and their trophy. Toby and their trophy hunt. We need to speak about it. Yeah, we'll go, we'll go to we'll go to But wait, wait, we still got some super chats to do. Matisse, yeah, if, Mount, if Mount has world class potential, he should be able to adapt to a new role, such as playing as a ten. Well, <laughs> sorry, I have to stop you right there. This is this is from Mason Mount Hater. So okay, he's been, <laughs> he's, he's been adapting. He's been adapting to a new role ever since he came to the football club. He's played 
front three. He's played midfield three. He's played left wing. He's played right wing. He's played 10. So in terms of development for a youngster, I'm not comparing him to Foden because I've always said that Foden for me is a better technical player. But look at Foden. Do you see Foden playing in stupid positions all the time? Or do you see him playing within a nice system built around him and and, and looked after and well-nourished, you know what I'm saying, and fed and clothed? Or do you see him having to put the team on his back, which is what Mason has had to do from a GA standpoint last season and the season before that, he had to turn up for, again, a lot of experienced players that don't do the business, i.e. Lukaku's and Werner's. So the, it's not really the same, is it? Do you know what I mean? It's not really the same situation. You're throwing in 22, 23. He is now 23, not 24. Google it. It's not hard to do, people. Um the guy is not under the same circumstances as a lot of young players. He's at a big club under a lot of pressure. He's not being rotated in and out because you don't have senior players that can be trusted like De Bruyne's and like David Silva's over the years. It's a different environment. So, like I said, he does need to improve. He could play a hell of a lot better. Um, right now, he's been poor, but he has played a lot of positions. So that doesn't make any sense. Cool. It's your boy Hamza. It says huge thank you to each one of you. This show keeps me going through a lot of tough times. You guys don't realize how much you will help me. Turkish, much love, brother, and Grizz, you're a goat. Steve, Matisse, Tobes, and Saeed, huge shout outs. Come on, you gunners. Hamza, my guy, love for the super chat and love for the comment, more importantly, because it does mean a lot to us. And the engagement on this show is mad. And um, so big up you guys, big up you, Hamza, and big up everyone that that's here twice a week, every week, because there's a lot of supporters out there. We've got a lot coming in the next few months, people. So make sure you guys are tuned in. Um, big up, Hams. I love for that. I'm going to keep the other ones that I need to keep for the other conversations. But let's quickly run through the Newcastle Chelsea predictions, Matisse, before we move on to Tottenham. 1-1. Uh, 1-1. One, one. One, one. Yeah, I'm being, I'm being generous because Callum Wilson, I don't think is fit. I think Chris Wood up front. Oh, is he not? Chris Wood's in there. So, what are you saying? Chris Wood's Chris Wood, isn't it? Yeah, what? Elaborate. Dead. Dead ball off, I mean. Chris Wood is coming now. Oh, you want to do a clip? Oh, you're a dickhead. Oh, damn. You want to do a fucking You want to do you should have let him flow, man. You should have let him flow. I know, flow. man. I had to stop it. I knew what was coming, man. Chris Wood was <laughs> yeah. today. Yeah. Yeah. Wood's dead. Chris Wood is a ah, cool. brilliant player, man. <laughs> one one. <man. laughs> what did you say, Turkish? 3 1 Newcastle. Oh, shit. You. Two nil. Sorry, fucking hell. And fucking Steve, hell. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> nah, because I'm reading the names here and I forgot to get it. I go two nil, me. Two nil, Newcastle. Ah, right, cool. I forgot. I forgot to get Hugh's predictions, people. But I'll get it after we the show. We go with Steve's. We go with Steve's. Put put Steve's predictions down for Hugh. Yeah, it's jokes. down anyway, so we got it there. Yeah, it'd be jokes, man. Saeed. <laughs> I don't know how you might find it, but yeah, go ahead. So, no, it's good, it's good. When he said um, about Wilson's injury, did he say 75% or was he like, what was it, 50 50? What the fuck you want to know percentages about for? Listen, bro, I, don't have, I don't have the percentages, bro. I'm what not kind of shit is that? What kind what of nerd behavior are you asking from me, bro? That's FDL. Is it 75%? Is it 75? He's asking as if he doesn't have Google and he's <laughs> now. I wanted to have a quick one, isn't it? Um, I'm going to go with Newcastle <laughs> to win. 2-1. 2 one, <laughs> The Super Chats are piss tape. Fuck off. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's if one, one goes by quickly, fam. Are you mad? 1-1 <laughs> as well, Tobes. 2-1. Callum Wilson will play, for sure. I can see oh, it happening. All right, play. physio. Physiotherapy, Toby. Not physio, he's got an illness. You know how these things are, man. He had an illness during the week. I'm sure he'll play. They said he wasn't going to play against us, and he played, so... So what did you say? 3-1? 2-1. one Newcastle. Two one. Oh, I didn't know that. Who said that we're scoring two goals? I said 2-1 Newcastle. No, not you. Was it Grizz? Someone... No, no. 1-1 one, one, me, bro. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, no one said just going more than... Everyone said one aside from Steve who said 2-0. Mm, fair. Couple here for you, Big Steve. Legend back on. And welcome back, Big Steve. We missed you, bro. Um... And yeah, people, like you can see in the bottom right-hand corner, 20% off Manscaped, TB620 is the code. 
and make sure you show the same love there um, and a little well i was about to say a little word from them it's a little word from me tonight's show is brought to you guys by manscaped the leaders in men's below the waist grooming and the performance package 4.0 is here people First up, we have the Lawn Mower 4.0, and this is the future of grooming. It uses advanced skin safe technology to help reduce grooming accidents and also waterproof. And there's a little LED light there for a more precise shave down below. And we also have the Weed Whacker nose and ear hair trimmer, also waterproof, and it also uses advanced skin safe technology. Also included people as part of the Performance Package 4.0, we have a ball deodorant and a ball toner as well as some boxes and a little travel case as well. Get 20% off people with the code TB620 at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you, but your partner will thank you more. There you go, people, TB620, link in the chat. There's going to be a link in the comment section below. There's already a link in the description. Make sure you use the code TB620 when you're buying something off Manscaped. It's coming up to Christmas time as well. So, yeah, get get someone a little present, 20% off. We move. Tobes, um, the request was to move on to you next. Yeah, um, who wants to go first? I'm sure people want to... <laughs> Oh my god, I told you it was ingrained in the cloth, in the fiber, in the press. <laughs> comment he said Turkish's balls wear baseball caps. I actually vision that. I actually vision little baseball caps on your balls. <laughs> Don't envision that. Don't envision that. That's very nasty. <laughs> I don't know what happened. You man played a full strong team. I didn't watch the game, but it wasn't you... full strong. But I it saw was strong Kane enough. and Perisic, but it was strong eight, enough. Yeah, eight, you, eight, you eight, did eight, see. Eight, it wasn't eight, full eight. strong team, but it was strong enough to beat them, and we mm. we didn't win. You've um, only got one trophy left, you know. I know. I know. <laughs> I don't know what you want to say. I, I know it's it's, it's <laughs> embarrassing. Bro, but... I hope you ain't made no bets, bro. I swear on this Spurs trophy. Are, Spurs, <laughs> Spurs are good for Spurs. It's annoying. Spurs are good for one of these like ultra humiliating performances every season. I was saying it in the chat um, amongst uh, some of my mates yesterday. Like, we had this every season. It's just annoying that, one, it's led to us being dumped out of this of this competition, a competition that really and truly we, we had ambitions to try and at least get to the final, if not win. Four games and you're into the final and you've messed it up against the worst side in the league. It's embarrassing. To be honest, I was actually laughing my head off on on the Wednesday night because I just couldn't believe like I couldn't, I couldn't believe that we've done it again because we always do this shit like we always there's always one team that will that will have a really disgusting performance against like really really poor team and we'll let them turn us over um last season it was what like who were people laughing at us for when we lost Pacos de Ferreira Enes Mura the season before we lost to flipping Royal Antwerp and got hammered 3 no by Dinamo Zagreb the season before that we lost to Colchester like I'm loose I'm used to losing to these crap teams and just playing poorly for at least once a season but like I'm fuming deep deep down I'm fuming that like we've just basically just let the chance of a potential trophy go to waste for what reason for what reason it's just it's just poor man you lot have at it kill him kill him have please. at him I'm I'm putting a lot of impetus and a lot of hope on on Conte because I feel like he's a top manager. I feel like he will deliver at Tottenham. But then I'm just like I see that and I'm like, bloody hell, man! It's it's difficult to kind of speak about Tottenham because it's like I'm looking at the team yesterday. You know, up front, dry man, Perisic and Kane. You have got attackers out, and this is a people need to understand that Richarlison is out, Son is out. You know what I mean? So Richar have, Richarlison is back. And that's the problem with Conte. Richardson was back. He was on the bench. I never heard Saeed speak about another team's injuries before. What in the defense? No, no, I'm just saying, innit? I'm just saying. I'm <laughs> if you're trying to, if you're going to defend Conte, no, don't. I'm not defending Conte. He has I'm no defense saying, after yesterday. I can't, I'm, I'm struggling to defend Conte. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm struggling because I'm like, every single time you think, you know what, right, take this seriously. They don't. And not even Forest, man. They're poor, man. I and know. Tottenham, again. Just do what Tottenham do. That's all. Listen, that's all the analysis is, you know. Tottenham do what Tottenham do best. Yeah. 
They're the worst, <laughs> they are literally their worst own enemy. If you want me to argue against it, I'm not going to argue against it. Bro, cook, cook me all you want. I'm back to being don't need to cook Tottenham. I'm probably being a Colada Tobes this time. It's what it is, man. Like, cook. Even, you know, even, 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 even I rated, even I rate, well, I don't say rated, I rate Conte highly. Um, but yeah. for the amount of money spent, I just can't believe that it seems like he's not happy with the players that have come in. It, it just does some, some of his team selections don't make sense. And at least with Chelsea, he did start poorly with Chelsea. And I think it was an Arsenal defeat that made him think and turn it around drastically. Yeah. I think he mm. changed it all up. Yeah, he, has, he hasn't really done that yet at Tottenham, and he's. I, I just don't know. Like, I, I rate Conte, but it's not working out, and I don't think it's going to work out. I'll be honest. You're, you obviously you want to cup this season, and 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 you did put your chest out for it, but the, the FA Cup's a difficult one to win. I'm not saying you don't have a chance, but that no, you is your only chance for a cup. And if he doesn't get that, then I, I don't know for him. Who if, did you draw in the Champions League as well? I did. Oh yeah, who did you draw? Milan, Milan. Milan, no, they'll beat yeah. Milan. Milan are butters, man. They'll beat Milan. I wouldn't. I wouldn't assume that. Yeah, I wouldn't assume that. As it's well. gonna be close. It's gonna be closely fought, but it's a it's Even a tight game. Nah, 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 nah. You'll beat. You'll beat Milan. You'll beat Milan. I think we'll beat them, but um, they could easily beat us. Uh, I think with the, we've with seen the top them this season, Chris. Yeah, no, no, no. But, no look, look, going back to again, Conte. We bigged him up. We said this with that. Do you know what? I think Turkey. You know what it is? It's more for me. It's not his selections because he's. He's obviously a guy that just trusts fucking 14 players only. <laughs> That's all he trusts. And he, and he trusts 14 players everywhere he goes. He, he likes only 15, 14 players. So it's not, the, it's not the selection, it's the formation and the tactics that are doing my fucking head in. If I was a Spurs fan, sorry. Because look at the contrast, the way they played against us. First half, they absolutely shut the bed. Second half, when everything was lost, not lost, but 2-0 down, you've got nothing to lose. And then he went brave. Why doesn't he be brave? Even against Nottingham Forest... I, I I don't know, man. I think I think I think, I think it's there's not there's nothing major like in terms of like anything imminent in terms of his, his job should be under scrutiny or anything. But it's the it's the man himself that's a ticking time bomb, and that's the biggest fear for Spurs fans because he is he's literally a ticking time bomb. He's a mental bastard, you know. It, you don't know. He just one day he might just wake up and say, "I can't yeah. even do an Italian accent." Uh, How do you do an Italian? You know what I mean, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, but you know what I mean. He's I'm gone. I'm he'll, he'll have a fight. Yeah, I'm gone. He'll have a fight with someone or board member or owner, and he'll say, "I'm gone. I don't. I don't like these lot." He's, he's a mad cunt, and that's the problem with Conte that you're always gonna have. He's too temperamental to for it to be a project. But you know what? You know what though? Like it's one of them ones where, when he came, I accepted that this is not a man that's gonna be here five years. Yeah, this ain't a. Uh, like, for all intents and purposes, we're in a project, but Conte is not like a long term project. This is a let's re let's quickly re establish ourselves back where we feel we need to be, which is a side who are consistently making Champions League football and a side who can get silverware, a side who can get some silverware. You've brought in a manager to do these things, and I feel like, I feel like we've we backed him. No doubt we backed him to a certain extent, but where the squad was when he picked it up, he clearly needs more. And there are still, to this day, crucial positions that haven't been addressed. But I don't even want to speak too much on, on, the, on the board and the plays and stuff. Like We know what the issue is there, but there's no reason why Spurs, Tottenham, the whole Tottenham Hotspur, needs to be going out to Nottingham Forest. I'm not going to be like, oh, we, we went out to Nottingham Forest because we didn't spend £60 million on a on a centre-back. We, we went out to Nottingham Forest because our manager played a terrible lineup, terrible lineup considering the opposition we're playing, and didn't really approach the game right. Didn't really approach the game right at all. And it, and it, it cost us. Like, Harry Kane, he even, said, he even said in his interview that Kane said that he was feeling fatigued. So what's your response to that? You play him? The guy, has, we've played twenty. That didn't make sense. So this season. That didn't make sense. That and he's didn't played make any sense. He's played, bro. He's played every single game, and we're wondering why why he's lagging, why he's he's not got as much energy as the others. Why are you playing him, bro? <laughs> we struggled to have attackers fit for the last month or so. We had Kulusevski injured. We had Mora injured. Who's obviously come back now. Um, we had Richarlison injured. Yeah, so he was only left with Son and Kane and Brian Hill. Then Sun gets injured, so he's only left with Kane. Like I didn't like the lineup against Liverpool on Sunday, but I can 
I can sympathise with him in the sense where, like, you, you don't have many fit attackers. Even Mora on the bench on Sunday, he couldn't even play 90 minutes. He was in, he was crocked. But the game against Nottingham Forest, you have Richarlison on the bench. You have Kulisevsky on the bench. You have bonehead Lucas Moore on the bench. You have Brian Hill on the bench. You have four attackers on the bench. And you're still playing Perisic up top with Kane? After you played Kane for 90 minutes against Liverpool, it made no sense to me. So now we've lost the game to, to Nottingham Forest. Harry Kane has played 60 minutes that he didn't really need to play. What was it for? Davison Sanchez, the guy stinks out the joint every single time he plays and you keep picking him when Romero's out. Jed Spence, we're, we're literally on our knees. <laughs> Look, I've got papers right here. These are crumbs. We're literally searching for crumbs at wingback. What's, what's oh, yeah. what, what's this, Spen this Spence thing is becoming disrespectful. At crumbs at wing back, yeah. and you keep playing guys that can't fulfill the job that you need of a wing-back. Jed Spence came on the pitch for 20 minutes and the most basic of actions completely washes out anything we've seen from Emerson and Doherty. The guy can run at players. The guy can go past two or three. The guy can win aerial duels. The guy can take man on. And what, what, is, what, is Conte, what is Conte watching then? It's just, it, it, and, and, it's like, I, what is I, the, I there's, there's, no, there's no explanation for this anymore, I don't know. I don't it's know. becoming I, laughable. Everybody can know. see it about him. I, don't I get genuinely it. don't know. And the thing is, everyone knows here <laughs> how much I love I love the Mad Geezer, innit? Like, I'm desperate for Spurs to get him signed up to a new deal and back him in January and stuff. But he needs to help himself. Because in games like Wednesday, you have cost us that game. And that's poor to say as a manager. A manager who's, who, we brought, who we've brought here to try and win us a trophy, you've cost us the game because you're making terrible decisions with the lineup and the approach. It's not on. It's really not on. What do you want in January? A centre back, a centre back, and a solution to right wing back. If you ain't gonna play Jed Spence, bring me another one. I'm sick to death of seeing that piece of poo poo Emerson Royale play week in week out. I'm sick of it, and I'm dead tired of seeing the same from from Matt Doherty as well. These guys get get given license to do what they can because of Conte, and when Kulusevski's in the team, they they look marginally better. I'm sick of it. I'm absolutely sick of it. I'm tired of seeing these scrubs. The same with Cessna on that left wing back. I'm tired of seeing these dead guys at the club. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. Yeah. Martin Yo, um, flipping Juan de Ramos, uh, Harry Redknapp, uh, Andre Vlash Boas. Like we oh. had some, we had some pretty poor players oh. in and around the squad, but I kid you not, no word of a lie. Sessignon, Davison Sanchez and Emerson Real are three of the worst players I've seen to wear a Spurs shirt in my life. And they keep playing regularly for Spurs. They keep playing regularly. This Sessignon guy, I keep telling people, he is terrible. He's absolutely <laughs> terrible. And Conte keeps playing him. Steve, man. Steve, Steve. He's you've terrible. got nothing to do now. You've got Matisse in the book, so you need oh, to start days, out. Oh, days, man. Oh, 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 oh. I left this show, yeah? I left this yeah. show a while back. The gremlins were swinging from the lampshades. Toby was in a toga drinking peanut Antonio. I've That's come back. Matisse is back in the box. So Matisse is back in the box, Gizmo style in Chinatown. And he's back in his fucking <laughs> man's bedroom, depressed as fuck. As like says if Tottenham have, have never nothing's changed. So I don't, I don't know what's going on, man. No, a lot has changed, Steve. It's just I'm tired of Conte picking players that hurt Spurs. I'm tired of Conte prioritizing what players. To Antonio. Antonio. Yeah, Antonio, Antonio. 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 it's still there. It's still there. <laughs> Steve, it's still there, but I need Antonio to help himself. Stop prioritizing the worst players in our team. Stop catering a system that, that can only benefit the players that shouldn't be playing for us in the first place. Baldi, can I ask a question? Do you reckon he can you can do that? Do you reckon he's got it within him? Because Conte's stubborn, Conte's Conte. So how can you change a man that doesn't want to change? You know, then buy new players. Buy new players. Me, where's the stressing gown? Where's the stressing what? gown? Have you got the stressing gown now? Go nah, it. man, it's packed. It's packed up, man. It's packed up. It's gonna make an it. appearance. It's need gonna it. make the blue oyster bar. <laughs> nah, 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 man. Listen, listen, players. Players are back. <laughs> players, listen, players. Are you kidding me? You kidding me? <laughs> players are back fit now, or some players are returning now, so. The performances will get better. And if we sign the right players in January, it, it will pick up. But I just need Conte to just please just help us, man. Like, come on. Stop. Plays in January, though. But plays come in on. January. Look what he said. Look, did you read his statement? Like, I'm not sure what the what the club's going to do. They're not sure what the, you know. 
Has he gone? I don't know. He's frozen. Is it just you? me? Bloody hell, Wait. man. I thought FSG sorted him out with some Wi-Fi, man. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Look at the yeah, no, like, oh, He's back. He's back. You did. He's back, man. Good, you're yeah, right. Some, did you do something? Someone done something, innit? Which one you fuck has done something? Talk to me. Bro, <laughs> he's got Wi-Fi. I'm sick to death of seeing Grizz wear this stupid winter hat as well, man. That Abdul Ooh, chicken Wi-Fi kicks in again, Grizz. Yeah, Abdul's <laughs> chicken name, man. Now, one of you, one of you fuckers done something. Talk to me. I'm looking all of your eyes. One of you done something. Which one was it? Bro. Oh, <laughs> no, but I was just saying, I was just saying, like, like, I don't, I don't think, I don't think, have you got a plan for January? Like, transfer yeah. window-wise? I'm, you know I'm not trusting these journals anymore. After That's they what fooled, I'm Okay. After they fooled our heads with all oh, the... War, the hunter, whatever war chest, and the signing X, Y, Z. I don't trust these journals anymore. But I think, I think we will definitely bring in at least one player in January. So it just we just got to hope and pray they strike, they hit the belly like they did last January. Because the last two players we brought in January last time, yeah. it really like reshaped our season. And I think now that we know that this guy's a stubborn manager, the best we can hope for is he at least starts playing some of these players within his system and gets better players to play within his system as well. Like, get a centre-back, sort out the right wing-back situation. If you can do two of those things, that's already two big issues off our shoulders and off his shoulders. So a few super chats have come in on the subject of Conte and Tottenham. Usman says, Conte in his career has won one knockout competition and the only reason he won was a full Phil Jones madness. Is he really winning another with Spurs? Be real. TMB says Spurs fans will need therapy once Conte is done with them. Being forced to play like this has its toll. Spurs is in trouble for the next few seasons. Thanks for this show, all of you. Love for the love, TMB. Um, and and yeah, it, it is looking like that. With Son and Kane getting old, obviously that's, that, that's probably a big concern, Toby, as well, considering... Um, I don't know. Like, is Kane staying? Is he signing another contract? Your guess is as good as mine. I think his his future is tied with Conte's. So, I think if Conte stays and we we back the manager fully and bring in players that can genuinely improve the XI in the positions that we need, the remaining positions that we need upgrades in, then yeah, maybe maybe he'll be convinced to stay. But it's up to the board. And we know in the past, this board have, have been too haphazard when it comes to backing managers. you got to do it 100% or just don't do it at all. Like, I'm sick of the half glass, half empty, glass half full. Isn't spent, there, an, isn't there well, an argument that they have, though? January, you mentioned how big it was in the summer. What, over 100 mil spent? It's the, yeah, probably the way it's been spent you're more talking about than... It, yeah, exactly. So, like, it, Richie, I think, I think we all acknowledge was a good signing. I know it cost big money, but it's a good signing in a position in an area of the team that needed refreshing with Son and Kane getting older and having options beyond Kulisevsky in a long campaign. Um but when we talk about key positions that need filling, yeah Spurs spent quite a lot of money in the summer, but we needed absolutely needed two dynamic technically sound centre backs to come into the team and we got in a 27 going 28 year old Longley who's done well for Spurs but he's not the player that we needed at all do you get what I'm saying mm. the right wing back situation that's between the club and the manager the whole Jet Spence situation is a mess Conte's, Conte clearly doesn't trust this guy and I'm like okay if you don't trust him why did you sign him nobody put a gun to your head and, and, and forced you to sign him why did you agree to him? The deal. It, look how long it took as well to get completed. It's bizarre, that, man. That, it's bizarre. Like the whole sign is just bizarre. Weird. To me. It's weird. Just, yeah. Orange said Jay Ling's doing the gritty was crazy. Turkish said Arteta last year over Conte and everyone laughed. Tottenham need a process. Three years minimum. <laughs> Laughing emoji as well. JJ says, do you see the pattern told all these different failing managers? But what's the common factor? Spurs, isn't it? And Mamadi says, Conte needs to learn from Arteta. Look how he took off Nuno Tavares in the first 30 minutes in the FA Cup. Arteta is ruthless and gained respect from us. Um, I know one just came in. Let me just see if that's on the subject. It is from Owen. He says, Tobes, everything you're saying about Conte and not understanding his decision-making, it reminds me of Wenger's second half with Arsenal. 
managers can't live off their name they must update their resume love for that owen um we've seen hold on but we've seen a lot of um we've seen a lot of these prag pragmatic managers fall off to be honest in in recent years is is conte potentially one of them because we can talk about the success he's had like we talk about the success Mourinho had but if you don't show it now in today's day and age with the way that football is being played and you can't show some flexibility and I've, I've heard you now weeks on end Toby talking about this guy making mad decisions that don't make sense that if any if yeah. it was any other manager they'd be getting dragged for this like Spence has a 20 minute cameo he probably won't start this weekend how, but, how, he, but he is getting dragged to a certain extent I know but it's like but it's like how 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 confident really are you of Conte's methods of winning actually still providing you with well, with, with trophies at the top level because that's that's what it's about because you ain't getting great football he literally won a league title like a year in, ago. Yeah, in Serie A, not in the Premier League. Okay. Well, he got us top four within, what, eight months of being here? So he still has the capacity to, to do good, like great things at Spurs. I just think he needs to help himself in certain situations. And we, as a club, need to do everything in our power to give him the tools he needs to be the best he can be. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a twofold two um, solution. Like I, I don't really get this notion that oh Conte's washed up, oh he's the, the most negative manager in the world. Like I don't get this notion that Spurs are incapable of, of playing decent football. Yeah, the football this season's been turgid for the most part. It has. And he's been given criticism for that. But were these not were these not some of the same people who were talking about how 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 exhilarating the football was um when we had the one game a week and, and he had his set team, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, last season. I don't know why people pretend as if Conte is incapable of, of doing some of the things that we're asking for with Spurs fans. I don't know what's going on with Grizz, but we've got a couple more super chats. Dave Jordan in the building says, Arteta has a more complete game model than Conte. So does Eric Ten Hag, Potter, Pep and Klopp. Spurs are done, Tobes, outdated manager and agent players. Uh, Vito says, Big Steve, the legend. Is back. Toby's rattled about Arsenal on top and another trophy this season. Matisse doesn't know how long a rebuild takes. Grizz with the mid-table war hat. Best show on YouTube. Come on, you gunners. G-Chain just got one in. Um, Conte's been back so far. He spent close to 200 million in his first year at Spurs. Uh, JJ says, thank you for not doing a tie Turkish, the legendary Kiwis ad. And he was genuinely fully immersed in it all. Laka says, Saeed doing these silly videos on Saeed saying United are back. I can't wait for those tears on the weekend. Gonna be legendary. One just coming up. It's mad. You said, you said United are back. Listen, if you can write a super chat, it doesn't mean it's, um, you know, it's true. But, <laughs> thanks for the donation. The receipts, man. And, uh, the receipts. Says listen, there is no receipts, man. He is. United have been back a few times. Saeed looks guilty still, I can't lie. I'm, not, I'm, I'm actually not guilty. Steve knows what he's doing. He's just trying to drop a grenade. I'm like, you know what? I've got receipts. But yeah, I've got... You know what? F all. Ah, cool. <laughs> Tin Man says, guys, look at the players Conte had when he won things with other clubs. Look at what he's got now. Dyer, Davies, Emerson, Sessignon, Sanchez. It took Klopp four years at Liverpool. Um, and... This one says Spurs is just cursed. Look back at the team Poch had and couldn't win anything with. Had almost an 11 of superstars. Long may it continue though. Come on, you gunners. And superstars that he, he made those players superstars. The same the same rationale that these these Arsenal virgins in your comments are not enough Arteta over after <laughs> after like three months. But okay. <laughs> uh, well, wow. well, man, well, man, man. Right, cool. Um, predictions Tottenham got leads at home on the weekend, Tobes bouncing back home game against the Leeds team that actually put up a fight against Arsenal. Obviously, ended up losing it and, and, and won a couple of big games recently. But other than that, I've lost the majority. Um, we got a win, uh, I think we will, we will win the game. I expect us to make hard work of it, like we have done with pretty much most of our matches over the last couple of weeks. but I watched Leeds play against Liverpool and they, their press was really good. I think we'll struggle with their press, but I think we can bypass their press um, and go direct. I think we'll win this game, man. Like, KG's been doing all sorts of verbals to me all week, gassing up the team, like really, really stoking 
stoking um, the flame. And I'm like, we've we've not won in our last three home matches. Like something's got to give. And now we've got Kulisevsky back and Richarlison back. I can't go against Spurs at home um, this game. So we have to win the game. So I'm going to go for a Spurs win. What kind of win? 3-1. I think we'll win the game 3-1. 3-1. Uh, Matisse? Um, you see, the thing is, you never know what you're going to get, man. Never going to go with Tottenham. I've, I've, I've backed Tottenham to win a few times and they've played around a bit. You're at home. If you was away from home, I think I'll go over Leeds' result because Leeds, to be fair, they've, they've beaten a few big teams now. Beat us, beat Liverpool. <sighs> Somerville, man. Somerville versus versus Emerson Real. I'm going to go 1 1. Okay. 1 1, yeah. Cool. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to three one Tottenham as well. Have you seen that Leeds defense? Yeah, but bro, I've seen in you. In fact, your well. your decision's locked in now. Yeah, it is locked in. It is locked in. Let me just bring Grizz back in. What's going on? Nothing, man. I'm gonna use my phone, isn't it? Allow me, sir. <laughs> oh my god. What's what the hell? Jesus <laughs> Christ. You get thrown out. Are you, are you in Siberia or something? What the yeah, hell? It's in Siberia. <laughs> 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 I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in the Kremlin, innit? Chris <laughs> is <laughs> looking very good. Um, they've, they've, they've turned the Wi Fi for security reasons. You understand how these things roll sometimes. Come on. <laughs> Going undercover. Cool. Um, where are we? So that's the Tottenham prediction. 3 1 from me. Hugh Hughes said 1 1. Um, Steve, what are you going with? Um, 2 1 Spurs, just 2 1 Spurs. And just a heads up that um, Hughes predicted a 2 1 Newcastle win for that Chelsea game as well. Said, I'm going to go with Tottenham to win 2 1. 2 1. Grizz, Tottenham leads. Tottenham leads. Oh, this is a tricky one for them, you know. Um, Uh, 2-1 Spurs. Two one Spurs. That's all of the predictions in. Um, where are we moving on to next? I think United got the next diff- most difficult or most interesting fixture of the weekend. Fulham away. Yeah. I think Fulham. I think Fulham are top half of the table. Yeah, they've had a good season, man. Yeah, they've, they've had, had a good season. Right. A lot of people yeah, put them down. To kind of finish what, at least in and being around the relegation zone. But to be fair, you know what I mean. It's, it's done a job that the the, the, the silver manager. Um, so yeah, I think they need they need more plaudits. I don't know for this game though. They've got Reed out, and I think Mitrovic is out, which is two big players for them. Um, especially Mitrovic, you know what I mean, with the physicality, you know what I mean, and a near back post header. I was worried. I was worried because I, I don't think we have Dallo for this game. So I don't know if we're going to play a makeshift right back, um, but no, Fulham. Fulham been doing their thing. Fulham need to need to have that respect. But for us, we need to we need to see the uh, the season, you know, before the World Cup out. We need to win. We have to bounce back after Aston Villa game. Obviously, we got humbled there. Good evening. You know what happened? Aston Villa did their thing. They had a manager bounce. We've got to be professional. We've got to be, um, you know, we've just got to go in there and get the result. I'm not really bothered about the performance as long as we get the three points. That's all. That, that matters to me. So yeah, man, it's gonna be it's gonna be a difficult game. I think we'll edge it, but yeah, I think um I think we'll get the result. I really do. But yeah, Fulham won't be an easy game though. Won't be an easy game at all. What is Chris doing, man? You're right, Chris. I don't know what's going on, I'll be honest, but Chris is playing like shaky, you know what I mean? Shake it all about. What's going on, Chris, man? You're right, mate. Right. He's not all right. Um what'd you say? Mitrovic is out, you said, yeah. Yeah, apparently Mitchell is out. That's that's what I've been hearing. So listen, but then again, Pereira might be coming with a vengeance, you know what I'm saying? Like I don't know. He didn't, but he, didn't, I, he, didn't um, he didn't play against us either. Um, didn't play, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So they, they, they're not a bad side, he's got them well organized, well drilled. Yeah. Um they, they, they got the penalty at City ten out of ten men. And they just their asses went a little bit. I, don't, I just think they didn't want to force it at City, and, and, and obviously we got the win late on if we was lucky, but it's tough at Craven Cottage. I think they just 
they're playing with no fear. I think they, they've got a good little side. Um, United's coming back after that loss. Obviously, they beat Villa yesterday. Um, but I don't think that's an easy game, mate. I just no, don't think that's not. an easy game. No. And I think they're going to look at the Villa game and think, you know what, Villa can if Villa can get into them, Will can get into them. And I just think it's going to be tough, man. Yeah. The, 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 like I said, Mitrovic not playing, I think then... You know what I mean? The, the hold up play and, and the stuff like that, bringing other players into the game, they're going to lack that because they're not going to probably have most of the ball. So that's where I think for me, they could have benefited from having Mitrovic up front, target man, see if he can ruffle up the Sandro Martinez, you know what I mean? And so forth. If Lindelof plays again. The not vegan the butcher. The vegan butcher, yeah. Listen, the vegan man. butcher, yeah. Allow my guy, man. Allow my guy. No, but yeah. is, that, is, that, is that, you know that striker they've got? That's the one that was at Spurs, right? Spurs. Which one? Yeah, Vinicius, Vinicius. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's, he's 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 horrific, just, man. I'm telling you, he ain't doing shit. I think I think no Mitrovic is the is the game changer. He, he's everybody... saying that he's doubtful. Is he definitely missing? Yeah, yeah Bro, he's, down. he's out. Apparently, yeah. That's what that's he's what out, I he's, out. Today. he's definitely out. Major okay. doubt. Major doubt, yeah. So mm. Like Pereira said, though might might come back to haunt you as well. Pereira. That's what he's, he's been good, bro. He's been good this season. Yeah. I can't lie. He's been good, he's yeah. Been. Yeah. yeah. yeah good. I didn't think he was shit, but um against City, he, he was full of energy in that. Whether it was against City or what, I don't know. But How he's got probably got a point to prove against United there. But he was he had he was full of energy. Fulham at least look a lot of these promoted ties when they come up, they tend to mm. shit themselves all the time and, and, and end up in back in square one. But You've got to give him a bit of credit for coming and having a go. And Mitrovic was one of them players that people was like, yeah, it's all right scoring 40 in the championship. You can't do it in the Prem. Mm, but to be honest, he's 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 been all right. He's, he's hit the ground running. So I don't know. I just think United at the minute aren't quite where they want to be. I think you can get at them, if, but you've got to be brave um, and just, just go for it. And I think whether Fulham will do that, I don't know. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Listen, we, we, I think for us, the main thing is to go in there, three points. If Newcastle beat um, Chelsea, then they're going to make another gap there as well. We can't afford to do that, man. So I think for us, Martial's back. I'm hoping we have a bit more fluidity up front rather than Ronaldo. I think Ronaldo will probably make himself unavailable. I don't know what he was here, but he was just apparently ill yesterday. So I think he's, he's saving himself for the World Cup. I don't yeah. know what's going on with, with Sancho. Sancho's got this, this tonsillitis, but been going on for like a couple of weeks, man. I, just, I don't know what's going on with him. Anthony, he's been injured for a while. Again, a lot of players are saving themselves for the World Cup. And it's just one of them. It's, it's, it was always going to happen. So, you know, I mean, whether Ganacho plays up front and then we have Rashford Martial, that might become our front three. But Jaden Sancho, by the way, not going to the World Cup, the, the fall from grace for him because yeah, I know. when he first burst onto that England scene, he was unreal and, 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 and everyone was talking about him like, yeah. And now he just looks the shadow of his former self. I don't know what the problem is. I swear he used to play players on. But oh, yeah, he did. Do you know what? For a young kid, that could be... This could... It's the most obvious thing, but it's true, though. This could make or break him. Because mm. a young player like that not being selected... Because you're right, Steve. It was like big signing, all the glamour, Man United's golden boy, 70 million plus, big yeah. wages. You know, You know what I said on your show? Yeah, yeah, no, no. He yeah, said he's said Chris said he's going to be the new is the new Deli Ali, but I was. No, I didn't say that. He said he could be. He could be. Sorry, could be. Sorry, could be. I said I hope he doesn't go down as the the the, the, the new Deli Ali. Hmm. I think that's a bit too soon. I'm not gonna lie to that. No, For it is. It is too soon. It is too soon. Yeah, I think you've got to give him to this season. You've got to give him to this season. And for me, like I'm not gonna go out there and be like, "Yo, Sancho, da, da, da. like he has to prove it to the fans, like. Garnacho showed yesterday that this is what the, the manager wants. He wants a bit of life in you and take people on. Sancho at the minute is very, very passive. He's, he's Them South away. American kids, though, are different. They're a different breed, man. They they run yeah. through brick walls for you. They, they, they love football. Yeah. Different. Some of the English boys, um, you've, we've seen it over the years. We've seen it with them. They, they, they get in a team. They think they've made it. And all of a sudden, they go downhill. And that's not anyone like hating on anyone. That's a fact. We've seen it throughout the years. Players burst on the scene. And we think, fucking hell, this player is going to take it by storm. Yeah. And all of a sudden, the hunger goes out of them. Something happens inside. They don't quite want it. You look at Dele Alli. You look at Jose Mourinho when he pulled him that day. That mm. was an honest, an honest chat from a, a very experienced manager, one of the best in the world, basically saying to him, 
you're going to get to a point one day and you're in, after you've retired and look back and re- re- with regret. And I think Jaden Sancho now he's in no man's land at the minute, and I, I don't think Ten Hag fancies him. I don't think the United fans are really on him. I don't. I think like you say, and then this young kid coming through now, Ganacho or whatever, looking like he wants it. You know, get you know, getting in and among the team, doing things what he should be doing. It, it's not looking good for him over there. It's not. Yeah. Basically, it, it, it was it was hard enough Rashford showing up and and, and playing on that left hand side and showing what Ten Hag wanted. Now you've got Ganacho coming out of it's, nowhere. It's the, it's the most it's the most it's the most obvious thing again to say. But high wages for young players. This is why City and Liverpool don't start off their kids with not kids. You know what I mean. Yeah, the ones that have done anything. Yeah, on high wages. They don't do it. No, it's not. It's not moved on. It's only moved on if you decide to pay out. No, no, it hasn't moved on. It hasn't moved on. Trust me. No, no. I mean, I mean, in terms of for me, when you want a player and we needed him, I get. But it's something. Then you don't get him. You don't get him. But it has to come within him though as well. No, but then you don't get. You don't get the player. Like you have. But that's what I'm saying. You have to set. Yeah, but Matisse. Yeah, but it's, it's like, but it's also a good sign of early indication into the character of the player. Yeah, if he's gone true. for the project or yeah. if he's gone for the money. Yeah. Now I might be sounding bitter and salty here. No, it's right. No, 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 because he did it. He did it. We we went in for him. We offered him one fifty in wages, and we thought that's tremendous wages for a young prospect. You guys came in and on whack two hundred and fifty. Yeah, yeah. We we could we said all right, good luck, and he said yeah, thank you very much, and he mm. said so, so it's like that. Yeah, but. I've, I get you. I do think you have a point with that, Chris. Some of them, like they once they once not they all cases themselves. are the same. No, no, no. I get that. That's what I'm saying. I think some, 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 some of them they get that money and they think they've made it, and maybe that that, that could apply for for Jaden Sancho. But I, I think three fifty, not two fifty. Three fifty. Yeah. I think above. Wow. I think above. Above all, the things that he was able to do. Some of the things that he was able to do. Um, in the Bundesliga, he simply can't do it in this league. Yeah. Like, he just can't do it in this league. And some of the things that are in his control that he can do, he just hasn't got the confidence to do it. So I think in Sancho's case, I don't even think it's like I don't even think it's. And I'm not saying you're saying he's he he he's arrogant. I don't even think it's a sense of arrogance. I I just think his confidence is literally on the floor because even basic things that he he is good at, he's not even doing at the moment and it's not over like Saeed said it's not over like he's still young enough and talented enough to sort of turn it around yeah. and I don't I, the, the money thing is the money thing but I, I do think he can definitely make a, a success at, of himself at Man United in spite of the fact that he's earning I don't know 300 or a, a week yeah. it is mad um, 5.7k still in the building um, it's already an hour 20 minutes in. We didn't expect this one to be long, but we are going to keep it moving. Saeed, the predictions for the Fulham United. Predictions. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think it's going to be a close one. I'm going to go with a 2 1 United. You know, I'm not confident, but I think we'll just about do the job. 2 1 United. Grizz, smile yeah, on your much. face. I'm going, no, I'm going 2 1 United as well. Only because of the Mitrovic, Mitrovic factor. Yeah, it is a big loss. Tobes? 2-1 Man United. Yeah, no Mitrovic, no party. Matisse? 2-1 Man United. Tactical. I said tactical. 2-1 um, United. Hugh's gone 2-0 United. Steve? 2-0 Fulham. <laughs> <laughs> this man hates you, Man United. I love it. So much. I love it. I, love it. I miss this. He hates them so much. No, it's man, it's more you, man. You get me like, but anyway. <laughs> Is my thing still working or what? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, you're fine. Yeah. 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 Um, that's all the predictions in. My Wi-Fi is acting up. I can see the signal in the top left. But yeah, still 5.8k. Hit the like button if you haven't already, people. There's only 1.2k likes on the clock. We like to get it to 2K before the show ends and show some love to the rest of the channels in the description below, as always. Um, and we're going to keep it moving. I was going to move on to Arsenal next, but because of my Wi-Fi, I think I need to just quickly reset the thing. Let's move on to... There's a couple Super Chats on it as well. Judy says, respect to Turkish for giving fans of smaller clubs a platform. 
I go to Big Steve for all my Stockport news and rumours. And JML says, Haaland to start tomorrow, Steve. So there's a couple for Man City. Let's move on to Man City. Um, beat Chelsea in the League Cup, Liverpool next. And this weekend, you've got Brentford. Give me a sec to sort my shit out as well. Yeah, to be honest, um, the result the other night we talked about, good win. Um, Liverpool, in that rigged draw yesterday, Peter Schmeichel, Dio Dublin looking in the ball box and picking the fucking City Liverpool with bent as fuck. Yeah, but did you say, did you, see that, did you see a bit afterwards where you said, what number's Man United? And yeah, it, United made, it was mad as fuck. It was mad as fuck. But it is what it is, we move. Um, but Pepin had a bit of a laugh today saying that we've got 16 players at the World Cup. Um, the only ones hanging back are like the kids and that. Pep reckons he's playing centre mid against Liverpool and Klopp's playing at left back. <laughs> so <laughs> both teams have got, have got struggling. But listen, the Fulham game last week was big because go down to 10 men, give a goal away, to have 71% possession uh, with 10 men, forcing it. Obviously, the big fella come on, got the pen. Riyad Mahrez has been missing all these pens. He stepped up, scored it, the relief around the stadium and all that. We're on. We're, we're keeping on the tabs of Arsenal, you know what I mean? So we've just got to get the job done. The World Cup's on the horizon. It's your last game before the, the, the World Cup. Hopefully, Haaland is back um, and, and starting for us again. Um, he's, we know he's had a little bit of a niggle. Um, Alvarez has been playing OK. We, we, listen, we, we, we're doing all right. We just want to get... It can be a tricky game, this one, before the World Cup. I think a lot of players' minds are are on the tournament. And and and, and, I, and I do think there's going to be a couple of players this weekend that will pick up knocks and miss the World Cup. So it's going to be in the back of your mind. City's probably hoping for a rollover. Brentford to, to come shit yourself. City get a couple of goals early doors and, and get the job done. Um, I don't think Brentford are the side. There was... I think they've got a little bit of a soft underbelly now. Last season, they were a different kettle of fish. Um, and coming to the Etihad at the minute is not the best place you want to be going. So I can't see anything other than the City win myself. Is, uh, that, is, that, is Ivan Tony back? Or no? No, no I think... Is he back? He, is he back? I don't know. Yeah, it was a game How suspension. Is, oh, I'd rather him play anyway, uh, to be honest. I'd, I'd rather uh, give him something to go and... To go and have a What's goal. the chat saying? Because I can't see the chat. Is Ivan Tony back? Because because I thought it was a suspension, uh, right? Nothing on him yet. I mean, yeah, he missed he missed the last game. Um, I don't know, man. I know. But City, I think it was a suspension. Yeah, City is going to start Harlan anyway. Apparently, he's still banned. Oh, he's back. Oh, he's back. Oh, he's back. Oh, he's back. He's back. He's back. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Still doesn't affect the scoreline. Well, <laughs> I, I I want to speak on. I want to a lot. Um, did we speak on Kevin De Bruyne's performance last game? Yeah, he did, yeah. You were talking yeah. about it. Oh, yeah, we did, we did. I thought it was it was proper Roy of the Rover stuff. All right, Haaland came on and got the penalty and changed the game, whatever, and blah, blah, blah. I get all that. But yeah. Kevin De Bruyne, 10 men down, he was everything that reminded me, and I'm sorry to bring it back to Liverpool. I know you hate this bitch, uh -huh. Steve, but, but it's, the cl it's the closest thing to Steven Gerrard when you realise you got to do everything. Yourself. It was like, he was like right wing, Left wing, yeah. central, making runs. And I think I think Toby said, I think Toby said it last week. I remember now. Yeah, you're right. Toby talked about his fitness levels that are not talked about and his strength. So everyone talks about his set pieces and his technique and striking the ball and blah blah blah, but his strength is not talked about. And he and he had people climbing all over him and he's running with them like the parachutes on his back. Yeah, I thought it was a phenomenal performance for KDB when just when they needed it because they were struggling against Fulham. They had all the passing, they had everything, but he was that X factor, that driving factor that, that made him win the game for me. No, yeah, no, I agree. I agree. He's, I agree. Brilliant. He's, he's brilliant. And then balls he puts in that box. I mean, that no wonder Harlan's having a field day. He's just he, he, someone did a, an amazing clip on Twitter. I think I put it in the group when he's shown you all them balls from De Bruyne through to Sterling and Jesus last season and all the misses, one-on-ones and that. Yeah. This, yeah, this Haaland guy, yeah. like you say, just the presence. You know, when he came off the bench, the crowd just went up a notch and you could see Fulham panicking with mm. sheer panic in the box, thinking, fucking hell, these balls are going to come in now and this guy's getting it. Don't forget, he scored that header. He was offside just. But that was his first touch, more or less. Bang, it's in the bottom corner. Then he gets a penalty. He's not even warm. Puts it down, smashes it. Um, we've just got a new dimension at the minute. We're doing all right. Arsenal are, are top of the league. Um, we've just got to keep in touch with them um, going into the final. 
I call it the business end of the season. That's when Manchester City really start to kick in and, and, and start to turn the screw. And I think that's we're gonna we've got a fight on our hands with Arsenal at the minute. So we, we need to be ready. You know what I mean? The, the the Carabao Cup thing, Arsenal are out, yeah. But like you say, three less games in January. Um, we just gotta get everybody fit for that. Isn't your fixture with Liverpool two days after the World Cup final? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So he said any Pep said any players that get to the quarters, the semis, or the final are to, supposed to be off for that. So we got 16 players there, you know, in, in a lot of the top sides. So it, the Liverpool City Carabao Cup game could literally just be a madness. Yeah. It could be a madness. But There's nowhere to fit in, though, is there? You know what I mean? There's literally no. No, it's a strange season. We've never experienced anything like this. Like, so at the end of the day, it is what it is. Um, we take it on the chin, but um, yeah, it's a mad one. You just got to win tomorrow, get the three points, keep going. Uh, yep. Cool. Um, where, are we, where are we? Do I have super? Yeah, there's a couple of super chats on the previous subject. I'll get them in there. Can you blame Sancho for going for 250k? Football is a short career where you put your body on the line, a lot of hard work and training. It depends, man. It really does depend. Um, because you, you can still be rich elsewhere on a bit less money and have a better chance and better platform to, to be a better player. So there's, there's a balance to it all. Sancho and Pulisic both in wrong teams because Sancho would do good things at Chelsea and same Pulisic would do it at United. I don't think so. Keep Pulisic where, where he is, mate. Keep Pulisic where he is. I don't, I don't know about that. Yeah. First name says no one, absolutely no one. Toby Tangibles. <laughs> I see so, I'm sorry. I like to. I like to go one layer deeper. Pause. <laughs> Pause. Yeah, Pause. I'm you, man. Yeah, I'm just sorry. I like. I like beneath the surface analysis. I'm sorry. JML says Harlem got lucky. Scuffed that penalty. Poor from the goalkeeper. Obviously, talking about that one last weekend. Um, on the predictions for Man City. Hugh's gone 2 0. Steve, what are you going with? 4 uh, 0. Cool. Cool. Uh, Said? Yeah, I've got the same 4 0. 4 0. Grizz? The one fucking week I didn't predict for. What, what, did you, how much, what was the score last week, Steve? 2 1. 2 oh, 1, sure, one yeah, last yeah, minute. Follow. Yeah. I'm gonna. Yeah, I, I think I think with Steve, I think a lot of players are going and the big teams are gonna have eyes on the World Cup, man. It's just natural human. I think it's gonna be a. I think it's gonna be one of those routine like two nil jobs and get over and done with and go home, two nil and the players save themselves. Yeah. Two nil, Tobs. I'm agree. Two nil. Two nil as well. Yeah, two nil is what I had as well. Two nil as well. Three nil for me. Um, and that wraps the Man City predictions up. A couple more left to go, people. Hour and a half in, so you know what time it is. Hit the like button if you haven't already. Subscribe to Steve, Saeed, Grizz, Toby, Matisse, Skullfuggery. If you haven't already, notification bell's on as well. And don't forget, the Big Six Extra is launching Tuesday next week on the official Big Six channel. It's going to be me, Daps, um, Cams, James, Fuad, and Eunice, and that's going to be the Big Six Extra launch show next Tuesday, 9 p.m. live. We're going to make it live, and then we'll be back again after the World Cup, hopefully, um, if all things go well, once a week, every week in between. And then I'm going to eventually leave that um, and the hosting responsibilities to someone else who supports another team. May, you know, it could be Cam, Fouad, Eunice, it could be Daps, it could be Jay, it could be anyone. And then I'll bring in an Arsenal fan in as a guest, so it's a bit different to this show um, and I'm going to make it a bit different as well. So look out for that Tuesday, 9 p.m. And show Manscaped some love. 20% off TV, 620. Moving on to Arsenal now. Wolves away. Can't really say much on the Brighton game because it, it, wasn't, it wasn't live anywhere in the world. I saw the highlights and I saw the team we put out. In all honesty, I kind of expected with that amount of rotation would go out to Brighton. But it doesn't let players like... Vieira off with apparently another poor performance. Um, I've heard from people that went to the ground. Um, amongst other players, I'm not just going to pick out because I didn't watch the game myself. So it's just, it's that's the biggest concern is that none of these players are knocking on the door. Hence why January is such a big thing for us. Um, because if they was knocking on the door and our Europa League performances were better, 
I know we got the results the majority of the time. If our performances were better as well as this League Cup one, then I'd be a lot more confident with some of the support in it. So far this season, I think Reese Nelson's probably been the only one off the bench to kind of show something. Mm. And, and that was that one against Forrest that was forced upon Saka with the injury. But, you know, in order to challenge City every step of the way throughout this season, we need some of the supporting cast to be knocking on the door. Or we, and or we need um, a couple of players in January. Hence why, you know, I, I see a lot of people saying, um, I mentioned January, like, it's, it's massive. And January is three games away. Wolves, West Ham, Brighton, and then we're in the window. Um, missing out on the League Cup, I don't really care. Two, three days after the World Cup final, a fixture, and then three fixtures in January, I think our squad can do without that. So I'm not too fussed about it. And yeah, Wolves away. Wolves are, they've been poor. They've been poor. I'm surprised they, well, am I surprised? It's kind of all went pear shaped since Nuno. Injuries as well, isn't it? I think, you know, Jimenez and Neto and the forwards, the forward line is just very... They haven't recovered from the big injuries they had previously, so... No. But the, the midfield was a lot meant to... You got Neves and... cold, man, but that Nunes has yeah. a, has a Nunes, little... I've not heard of Nunes once, bro. What's going on? Like, he hasn't, yeah, he, he, he hasn't. Liverpool's he one of the names I would have taken in the summer, but he hasn't really adapted well. But it's, it's, it's in a poor team at the moment as well. Yeah. Ruben Neves obviously still stands out here and there, but... He's, uh, he's doing well. He's doing, he's doing as well as he can be. But Wolves, they just... They just look too fragile these days. They're not really. They, they've lost that solidity that they had under under Nuno, and and to go with that, they're just very very impotent. So they spent a lot of money on their team as well. You look at um, Guedes as well. They bought him big money after his first season in La Liga with double digits last year. But I said it in the summer when he signed. Guedes is Guedes reminds me a little bit of like. Like a sense in a sense where this guy can do something in a, a game here and there, but when you need a consistent supply of goals, he ain't your man. And then Pedence, one of the biggest false profits ever. The guy looks flashy but doesn't score. They're just they they're too good to be doing as badly as they've done this season. And granted, and I think results have to improve, and I think Lopetegui will get them get them further up in the table. But I think there's ultimately a, a, a cap. On, on Fulham and I think the Connor, the, Connor Cody, the Connor Cody decision to let him go and the Willie Bolly decision who that that's like was weird for me I don't know Connor Cody always he was was not the greatest player in the world but he was a leader he always barking orders at the back he kept organising them and that and I always thought he was mainstay and when I seen him go to Everton I was like that's a weird one but <laughs> Wolves aren't the team they was they're not um, they've got individual, some great players, and I think you will get a sporadic performance every now and then out of them. But Arsenal will be comfortably for me. Yeah, I'll, too. And I'll just get straight into predictions considering the time. I'm gonna say three. Yeah. No, we're oh, away. Doesn't even matter. Arsenal. Um, <laughs> that doesn't even matter. <laughs> what do you say, Steve? Two 0 Sorry. Oh, 2-0. Hugh's, awesome. Hugh's gone with 3-0 as well. Um, Said? Yeah, I'm going to go 2-0 Arsenal. 2-0. Chris? I'm going to go 1-0 Arsenal. 1-0 Arsenal. Tobbs? I'm going to go 3-1 Arsenal. 3-1. And Matisse? 3-0 um, Arsenal. Is the, new, is the new coach in? No, no. no. Not until okay. after after the World Cup, Lopetelli. Oh shit! Now, I think I think he comes. I think he. I already comes on the fifteenth or something, but I might be wrong. I might. Be yeah. Wrong. So um, they, they can't have that that kind of uh, good evening. You know what I mean? Bad <laughs> towards last week. Um, where are we? Still Liverpool, Southampton to get through. All of them predictions are in. Couple super chats here saying Elias saying listening to this at the gym is the best feeling. Love from Washington, D.C. Steve, you've been missed. Come on. And um, I know it's not Washington related, but we've done a little feature for Fox News New York. Um, we're going to be on their Good Morning show coming up to the World Cup, which should be sometime next week. Um, so when I get the link to that, I'll post it out there. Man. People in New York, show some love to that. I don't know if you can tune into it in Washington and other states, but I'm sure you can. I'm sure you can. Um, JJ said, oh, sorry, JJ says, if Arsenal pips City to the title, Grizz and Steve surely won't mind. 
and may even enjoy it. But what would the stance of bottom left, bottom centre and top right be? Just if. Imagine. Well, let's get to that moment. Let's get to that moment. Too much, too much talk, not enough action. Get to that moment, then we talk. Yeah? Well, we won't be talking. We mean you'll be leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Live, Liverpool 11 two days after the World Cup versus Man City. Kelleha, Gomez, Matic, Ramsey, Robo, Fabio, Thiago, Jota, Salah, Diaz, Firmino, Liverpool, Carabao. Why is Thiago not going to the World Cup? He didn't get yeah, yeah, he's not. And uh, Luis Enrique, don't fancy him. He's never been Luis there. Enrique is weird, man. I can't lie. He's weird, he's man. Left, weird coach. He's left out weird, old man. He's left, out Ram, he's left out Ramos and Thiago. So he's yeah, called man. a bit of a stare, but that's him. He's, he's, he's got his own favourites. I don't rate him anymore, man. I bet you don't. He's left out there, or? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hold on a minute. Man. The best goalkeeper in the world and the best yeah. midfielder in the world. The, the, squad. Bro, the best man. goalkeeper in the world didn't even make the 55 yes, man bro. provisional that squad. Guy, that guy's got a foot fetish, man. That's why he's not in the team, man. He loves it. It's not sex talk. Not me. Really. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a foot fetish. You know what I mean? He loves that distribution and all that, man. I thought you wanted distribution as well. Sorry? I thought you wanted distribution at your club Listen, as well. Man, if my keeper can shot stop, mate, I mean, that's what we were asking Yeah, for. but so can, so can the Spanish keepers that have been called up. You know what? That Sanchez, yeah, I'm telling you now, man. Listen, I don't know about him, man. I've been watching him closely, you know. I'm not sure about that Sanchez. Sanchez is good, but he does make... A, a, the yeah, he makes errors, man. But I don't know what about him. Yeah, but why would anybody? He's a fucking Brighton. What do you want? Why are you beefing Brighton? Do you rate him now? Huh? Do you rate him anymore? I don't want to know. Mendy's calm, bro. Don't worry about Mendy, man. He's going to the World Cup. Just worry about your goalkeeper when he's watching on TV. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, so Mendy's coming back next week, mate. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> the group stages end that quickly, yeah? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I'll tell you guys. Uh, <laughs> the yeah, end says, big up the big six. Turkish, can you check the members' comment section? I can't post a super chat on my account. I'll check the members' comment section. Someone else said uh, it might have been you to check it earlier. Don't worry, I've seen the message afterwards or probably tomorrow because I've got to sort out some bits afterwards um, regarding the show. Um, I'll check the members' section and see what's going on there. People still 5.5k here. We're on to Liverpool, Southampton to round it all up. Briz, um, through in the League Cup via penalty shootout. Um, and Southampton at home next. Yeah, like the, the, the Carabao Cup was pure, pure kids. Like some even I hadn't heard of what well, I've heard of them, but I've never seen them play kind of thing. So yeah, that's not much of a muchness. Uh, Southampton, I just... <laughs> it's mad, isn't it? I don't want to be another new manager or a team that's struggling's best best game of the season. We've been Fulham's highlight of the season. We've been we've been Leeds' highlight of the season. We've been Nottingham Forest's highlight of the season. It's fucking mad wild. Now, Southampton, they've just nicked Luton's, uh, Luton's manager. So, shout out Luton every time. Mm -hmm. uh, Nathan Jones guy, they've gone down a totally different route from Hassan Hutu, who was like a European progressive coach. They've gone down like a homegrown coach, young, you know, highly thought of. So no one knows how they're going to set up, what kind of formation he plays. Well, I don't know, unless you guys have been watching Luton much. I mean, you know, from the research, like we don't know what kind of manager he's what, but that shouldn't matter. That really shouldn't matter. It should be us getting on that pitch and just for God's sake, winning a game of football. So by the end of the world, so by the, by the end, before we go fly off for the World Cup, we're like, I think we're probably about four or five points behind the top four, which is which is doable, which is after the madness of the... It feels like two seasons, doesn't it? This season's total disaster and flop. And then a six-week break, which is like a pure, pure whole pre-season, we start going again. And hopefully, you know, we can go again. But yeah, tomorrow is just one of those ones, just by hook or by crook, man, just... Get over the line. Don't give them any encouragement. No, no early goals. No gifts. No stupid cock ups. And then, and then we uh, we assess it after the World Cup because no one really knows what's going to happen after the World Cup, man. What teams are going to progress? What the players are going to be like? Fatigued mentally, physically. Sixteen players for how many? How many for City? Sixteen. Sixteen. 16. Yeah. Eight. I think it's eight for Liverpool. 
I don't know the rest. I don't know Chelsea, how many they've United, got. No, United's no. 14. United 14. And how about yeah. Chelsea? I'm not sure, not to be sure. honest. I, I've stopped counting the players recently. But um, do you get what I mean? That's like, <laughs> wow. That's like, that's <laughs> like a, lot, a lot of squad. <laughs> that's like a lot of squad, important squad players, man, members. So we don't know what the what the World Cup's going to entail. Total different climate, total different country. 12, Chelsea, all right. So it's mad. Chelsea, and, uh, Arsenal 9, Liverpool 7, and Tottenham 10. Whoa. So this is what I meant when I said wild season. It's, it's something that we haven't seen before. So if we can hang on to the cocktails of these clubs, I know it's a bit of a shit one coming from a Liverpool fan and big dogs and all that. And I'm talking about cocktails. But if we can hang on to their cocktails, then I'm still, I'm still got faith that we're going to come good. I've told you a lot. I've had a laugh and a ban- banner and a joke about it the last few weeks. But I genuinely believe that we will come good once the season starts again, so to speak, or new season, however you want to put it. So, yeah, tomorrow, 2-0 um, Liverpool. Just standard, boring yeah. routine, man. 2-0, yeah, I'm, I will take that. Cool. Tobes? Um, uh, 2-0 Liverpool. 2-0 Matisse? This has a Southampton win written all over it, you know? <clears throat> because every time Liverpool are expected to win a game... Against a lower league team, they just wow. they turn into madmen. I don't like so. Usually, I just go with a simple Liverpool win, but I don't know now because new manager, he's lot just always want to drop points to the teams below them. Um, Nunes, Salah, everybody seems to be back playing well. I'm gonna go two one Liverpool, but I swear if you man. If you man fuck this up and, and send me second place. No, no, I'm not because do because sign. everybody's going for wins. I'm top of the league. I need to go into the top of the league by a World Cup. You know what I mean? I have to be, <laughs> be strategic. Oh, shit. So he's doing tactical. So what I'm saying. Take tactical, yeah. Here. Tactical masterclass, yeah. So sure. this is not your prediction, is it? You're just using our predictions, then, isn't it? So it's not your prediction. You're, you're, you're playing some next game. Bro, if, if you want to win the league, bro, then you're going to have to get your, your correct well, scores man. get your correct scores up, bro. I, I, think, I think we should start sending in Turkish our, 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 our secret scores because this is not your prediction. This is our predictions. Do you get what I'm saying, boys? Can someone back me on this? I'm not going to lie. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Because, because we start each team with each person, everyone gets a chance to predict He's such a nerd. This is why Toby switched to him. Hmm. Riz, you, you you know you've changed the form, the formula of this twice already. Yeah, but you can't change it again, then, isn't it? Give me no, you can't change, change it again. How many times do you want to go back and forth? For real. Until I win it. <laughs> if you don't yeah. like it, then you should have started the season better, mate. Yeah, and then you wouldn't be behind me. Come on, come on, come on. I ain't giving up on the same thing. What I was going to say just then, man. You know what I mean? I'm I'm looking over my shoulder right now. That line. <laughs> Matisse said 2-1. I'm going 3-1. Hugh's gone 3-1. Steve? 3-0 Liverpool. 3-0 Liverpool. And last but not least, Saeed. Um, I'm going to go with... 3-0 they're Liverpool. Call, they're calling you Gris Karen. <laughs> wow, that is no joke. Karen, you know. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Ah, right, cool, people. Have I got the prediction table here? I might as well put it up quickly for a little reminder. Matisse is top 55. Slow players. and steady. I just need to get to the World Cup, man. I'll go again next time. Slow next and steady. You coming. You go again, man. Just need to get to the World Cup. Can we call it like everyone else's prediction league table? Because that's what to- that's what Matisse is doing. He's just copying everyone else's predictions. How can that be possible <laughs> when I don't always go first? I mean, I, I don't always go last. It doesn't make sense. Mm. Doesn't make got sense. One super I got a lot of here. correct scores at the beginning, man. We've got one super chat here from AM. It says, Big up the big six. Steve, can you speak on Lavia at Southampton and what Liverpool can do? Reds making moves come January. You know much about Lavia? Or... Yeah, to be honest, he was he was highly, I think he was highly thought of. Um, he was on the bench loads of times last season. We were struggling at the end of the season. We had Fernandinho in there. I don't think Pep thought he was ready enough to be in a top four team. I don't think he was that replacement that can come on and see a game out when Rodri was tired. So I think he was eager to play. I think City got a great deal off Southampton. They've got a buyback and a they've got a buyback clause and a sell on clause. So it's a win win situation. He obviously went to Southampton. He hit the ground running. 
Um, and I think Chelsea was apparently trying to get him, uh, even though he'd only just gone to Southampton. So he's a great player. Prospect is good. He's been injured a bit this season. But if you're asking me for a top six side um, competing at our level, the way we take it and in a pep team, he's, he's not ready. But he's more than ready for a lower Premier League side. And in What's about he a DM? Years, yeah, he's a DM. He's a DM, yeah. yeah. He's Belgian yeah. DM. I think he was an Anderlecht boy, and I think when Vinny got there, he gave yeah. him the heads up, and City uh, City went and gripped him. But um, yeah, maybe he might end up back at City one day on the buyback. We never know. Mm. I'm hearing oh. fifty million for him these days. Mad, crazy money, mate. That Samuel West Ham, uh, sorry, Southampton lost uh, one of one of our guys went to Southampton Academy. Guys, they they signed that Larius. I think he's a Spanish. Joe, Joe Shields. Joe Do Shields. You know Southampton bought back four of your players in yeah. one summer. What's what happened? Yeah. Because they won the under 23s league, they walked it, but they had yeah. these really great youngsters that were not good enough for City but were good enough for Premier League. Like, that's what did we did. See, when um, we Southampton are smart, they bought back smart, yeah, yeah. Bazunu, Lavia, Adoza, Samuel Adoza, the wing, yeah. Wow, well, that's listen, the under 23. Freeze last week beat United 6 1. Our yeah. players were swaying, swaying on the pitch, taking the piss out of Ronaldo. And we've got players coming through now Carlos Borges, well, Portuguese kid. Carlos Borges got four against United, got three the week before. We've got another Jaden Sancho situation on our hand here. I think he, he's going to want to, he's going to be wanting to play soon. So, but City are clever, man. Then buyback options and sell ons and that. A bit, so basically, if City buying back, West, Southampton double the money. And if City don't, Southampton get 20% and he moves elsewhere. It's a win-win, man. It's a good model. I think you're going to see a lot more teams doing it. There's no point in players playing in the under-23s winning 14-0. They're beating Brighton 14-0. So they're too good for the 23s, but they're not quite good enough for Man City's first team. But they're good enough for lower Premier League teams. So City, are, I think you're going to see a lot of teams going picking in City's, City's uh, youth team soon. Yeah. Cool. That rounds it up, people. Before we do go, a quick reminder, Tuesday, 9pm, the Big Six Extra starts. That's going to be me, that's Cams, Fuad, James, Redmond and Eunice. Look out for that launching Tuesday, 9pm on the official channel. Not this channel, the official channel. So if you're not subscribed, go over to the official channel in the description below and make sure you are subscribed. And whilst you're there, subscribe here as well as Steve, Saeed, Grizz, Tobes, Matisse and Scarfuggery. All of the links are there. As we wrap it up, go and subscribe and show some love, people. As well as Manscaped, like I said, Christmas is coming up, so show them some love. And 20% off using the code TB620. We'll be back Monday night, regular time for the regular show. Um, and then we're going to be back next Thursday or Friday night for the World Cup. And it's a World Cup draw. And we'll do a little sweepstake and all of that, people, similar to the Euros last year. So look out for that. And yeah, hit the like button on the way out. Subscribe on the way out. Make sure you subscribe to this channel too. Don't forget. And yeah, show Manscaped some love, people. We're all out. Peace. Tonight's show is brought to you guys by Manscaped, the leaders in men's below-the-waist grooming. And the Performance Package 4.0 is here. Get 20% off with the code TB620 at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you, but your partner will thank you more.